Even though the largest desalination plant in North America will open this fall in Carlsbad, California is only now coming up with rules for building and running desal facilities. Joining me to talk about the new standards and their effectiveness are Bob Yamada, the Water Resources Manager for the San Diego County Water Authority, and Matt O'Malley of San Diego Coastkeeper. Bob, let's start with you. What specifically do the new guidelines address? Well, the new guidelines bring statewide consistency to what has been a permitting process that has been conducted on an individual plant by plant basis across the state. And you know, the permitting process that was utilized for Carlsbad worked fine, but now these new these new regulations um, raise the bar even higher and, and really put in place the most protective regulations in the world for desalination facilities. So we're talking about how the water gets into the plant and how the salt gets back into the ocean, correct? That's right. It covers the intake of water into the desalination plant and then the discharge of the salty water that's left over the brine, if you will, back to the ocean. Now tell me about subsurface intake versus open ocean intake. The, uh, regu the new regulations really lay out a requirement for subsurface intakes unless they're not feasible. And for example, in the case of Carlsbad, when that project went through its permitting process a few years ago, those uh, subsurface intakes were found to be infeasible. And so the, the, the new regulations really set, a, uh, set in motion a process to determine first whether or not subsurface intakes are feasible and then if they're not then to move on to say an open ocean intake or an intake that's above the seabed where you would screen for uh, keeping out those microorganisms fish uh, larvae and, and uh, and fish eggs for example from coming coming into the facility okay and very quickly what determines uh, subsurface intake versus open ocean intake? Well, as part of these new regulations, there will be a what's called a determination, a feasibility determination. So you'll need to go through a, a study and look at all the, the various aspects of a particular site and whether or not it makes sense to do a subsurface intake or not. Matt, how do you view these new desal standards? Well, we're, we're glad they exist. I mean, we needed something on a statewide uh, basis. I think there's some good and some bad. Um, from our perspective, we're glad that there is a preference for subsurface because that is the more env environmentally benign uh, technology. However, when it comes to the de de feasibility determination, we were hoping that the regulations were more maybe sort of federal or other state guidelines that really don't consider cost because it is a more in in expensive uh, technology. I also see cer certain things like after the fact mitigation that it still allows. So basically any kind of environmental impacts that occur uh, may be taken care of after the fact. And it's really hard to measure one with one as far as that wetlands restoration or things like that. And then even some of the screen intakes that it might be allowed if subsurface are shown to be infeasible, um, really it's something that are problematic. The, the State Water Board's own reports show that they might be between zero and one percent effective. So our concerns primarily lie in the environment. And uh, we think that if not a mandate, uh, then at least a rebuttable presumption should have existed for subsurface intakes. Now you oppose desalination, why? We don't actually, we don't, don't. To to totally oppose desal. I think there is a time and place for it and I think w when it's done we'd like to see it done appropriately and that's environmentally and economically appropriately. And so um, I think there are circumstances where uh, once we've exhausted conservation and once we've exhausted recycling technologies it will play a part. Uh, it's just when it does that we want to make sure it's the right environmental and economic decision. Now do you worry that because we're experiencing a drought that this might drive more desalination projects without thorough consideration? I do. I think the statewide regs will help. I think though, even though they're designed to create consistency, because it leaves a lot of discretion in the regional water boards, and there are many of those throughout the, the state, uh, I think you may see some inconsistency statewide. And so that's kind of why we wanted them shored up. Again, there is some good in there, uh, but I still think it will be problematic moving forward. And, and a lot of people are calling for more desal, more desal, um, without maybe understanding the full economic and environmental impacts of it. Bob, now you're assigned to work on the Carlsbad desal project. Right. How closely does that project conform to these new rules? Well, first of all, the Carlsbad project already has gone through a permitting process and that led to its construction, which now stands at about 90% complete and will be online in the fall, providing us a new water supply. Um, in the future, the Carlsbad project will need to conform to these new regulations. So we'll need to, as the permits are renewed for the Carlsbad project and, and ultimately the, the power plant adjacent to the Carlsbad project will cease operations. And when, it hap when that happens, uh, the project will need to come into compliance with these new regulations. So we're anticipating that, that that will be one of the first projects to utilize the new regulations that the state has just uh, put into motion. And that 
Carlsbad Power Plant goes offline in 2017? S should be by the end of 2017, although that schedule is, is uh, um, may shift a little bit. But when that happens, that will, that will really set in motion uh, the, the uh, permit renewal process that, that will, and we will fully comply with these regulations, which are, in, in, our, in our belief, and I think the state's belief, fully protective of the marine environment. We've got to wrap it there. Bob, Matt, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you.